So from the last video, I showed you how to create a pivot table in Excel using VBA. In this video, I'm going to show you how to control the pivot table settings using VBA. All right, so let me pull out the agenda first. Let's see. Actually, let me go back to the pivot table. All right, so if you click on the pivot table, if you right click, here we have these pivot table options. And from this window, we have uh, how many tabs? We have six tabs. In each tab, we have different pivot table options that we can configure. And I'm going to show you how to manipulate each setting using VBA. Here, let me close this window first. And here, we uh, create the screenshots for each tab. I'll start with the layout and format tab. And let me increase the image size. Okay, so that's a little bit better. Here, let's go back to the uh, VBA script. And this is the code script from uh, the first video. I'm going to start with the layout and format tab section. All right, so if we want to merge and center cells with labels, we can reference the merge labels property. And we can set the property to true or false. So if we set this value to true, when we create the pivot table, it's going to automatically apply the merge setting to the label. I'm going to skip this one when in compact form in dense row labels, how many characters do you want to have? This one I don't think is very important, so I'm going to skip this one. I'm going to cover the settings that I think are important. The next setting is, if your pivot table value is an error, what do you want to show the value? And also, if your pivot table value is an empty cell, then what do you want to show? So first, we need to uh, set the trick mark for these two settings. And to set the trick mark for error value, we need to reference the display error string setting or property. And I'm going to assign the value to true. For empty cell, it's going to be display null string. And I'm going to assign the value to true as well. And once you set uh, these two settings to true, then I can assign the value. So if my pivot table value is an error, then I want to show an uh, error value. And this one is going to be null string. So if my pivot table value is an empty cell, then I want to show empty cell, actually empty value. The next setting is the out of fit column width uh, update. So every time we update the pivot table, the pivot table might automatically apply the out of fit feature to the pivot table to adjust the column width. And I always like to make sure that uh, this setting is unchecked. And I can control this setting by referencing the has auto format property. I'm going to set this value to false. And the next setting is the preserved cell formatting on update. And I can reference this setting by inserting the preserve formatting uh, property. And I'll set this value to true. Right, so if I go back to my pivot table, and if I recreate the pivot table, and right click, go into my pivot table options. Now if I just do a quick comparison, here my merge and center sales with labels setting is check. And this one I'm going to ignore. And for the format section, and I'm supplying the values. Will my pivot table values show errors or empty cells? Then we have out of fit column width on update and preserve cell formatting on update. And that's for the layout and format tab. Now let's go to the next one, which is the totals and filters tab. From the totals and filters tab, we can control whether or not if we want to show the grand total for rows and for columns. And to control those two settings, we can reference uh, row grand and just the uh, property name to control the first setting. I'm going to set the setting to false. And for the uh, grand total for columns, we can reference column grand property. I'm going to set the uh, setting to true. 
The next setting is the allow multiple filters per field. So this allows you to select multiple items when you filter your pivot table items. And we can control this setting by referencing the allow multiple filters property. And I'm going to set this value to true. The next setting is the use custom lists when sorting. And I also make sure that when I create my pivot table using VBA, I make sure that these two settings are always checked. And I can control the setting by referencing the sort using custom lists property. And I'm going to set this value to true. All right, so we're done with uh, the totals and filters tab. Now I want to move on to the display tab. Actually, let me recreate my pivot table. All right, so if I go into my pivot table options, totals and filters, and I should expect that the first option is going to be unchecked, and the second option is going to be checked. For the filters and sortings option, I make sure that uh, these two settings are checked. All right, so let's see. The next one will be display. If I want to control the setting, which is to show expand collapse buttons, we can uh, use the property code show drill indicators. Here we can enable or disable the setting by assigning true or false. I'm going to assign the value to true. And if I want to show the contextual tooltips, they want to reference the display context tooltips uh, property. I'm going to set the uh, value to true. The next one is the display field captions and filter dropdown. And if you want to control the setting, they want to reference display field captions. And the value is going to be true or false. I'm going to set the uh, setting to false. If I'm someone who has been using Excel since Excel 2000 or 2003, they might still prefer the classic pivot table layout. And you can enable the setting by referencing the in grid drop zones property. If you set the property value to true, then it's going to enable the classic pivot table layout when you create a pivot table. I'm going to enable the setting to show you uh, what the classic pivot table layout looks like. I'm going to skip show the values row and these two settings, uh, show item with no data on row and show item with no data on columns. Right, so the next setting I want to show you how to configure is the uh, sorting option. So in pivot table, we can sort our uh, labels by alphabetical order from A to Z, or we can apply our own custom sorting list. And we can control this setting by referencing the field, list, sorting, ascending. And if you set this value to true, then it's going to uh, set the uh, value to sort A to Z. And if you set this value to false, then pivot table is going to uh, use the data source sorting order as the sorting logic. And I'm going to set uh, the setting value to false. Right, so if I recreate the pivot table, now going back to my pivot table, pivot table options on the display. And if I look at the settings, so here uh, the first option is check, this one's check, and my classic pivot table layout is also check. And from the field list section, I'm setting the sorting logic to data source order. All right, so if we go back to the pivot table, here let me show the uh, pivot table fields. All right, so noticing that from the uh, classic uh, pivot table layout, we have uh, these blue gray lines. So that's basically kind of like a, a simplified ways to show you where each field should go. In this case, I don't reuse the classic pivot table layout. Let me set the setting back to the uh, normal layout. 
If I turn off the classic pivot table layout, then we don't see those uh, helpers grid lines anymore. All right, so we're done with the uh, display tab. Now let's go to the printing tab. All right, so on the printing tab, we only have three settings. Oops, yeah, let me go back. To control a form to print the expand or collapse buttons, we can reference the print drill indicator property. I'm going to set this value to false because I want to print my pivot table. I usually don't like to show the indicator. And if you want to repeat row of labels on each printing page, then you can reference the repeat items on each print page property. I'm going to set this value to true. And the next one is if you want to print the uh, print title, then we can set the print titles property to true. All right, so let's go to the next one. All right, so for the data tab, we have uh, save source data with file. So this setting will save the source data as a cache. So next time when you refresh the pivot table or when you uh, reopen the Excel file, a pivot table can be low much faster. The downside is your Excel file size will also be a little bit bigger. And we can control this setting by referencing the save data property. And it's going to be true or false. I'm going to set the setting to true. The next one is the enable show details setting. And to control the uh, setting value, or the uh, checkbox. I'm going to reference the enable drill down property. And it's going to be true or false. If you don't know what this setting is, here, let me go back to my pivot table. So when you click on a pivot table value, if you double click, it's going to display the records ties to, oops, yeah, tied to this pivot table value. If you set the, here, let me go back to the pivot table options. If you set the enable show details setting to uh, uncheck, the next time when I double click on a pivot table value, it's not going to drill down to the records that are tied to uh, this value. And that's what that setting is for. And I always make sure that I set uh, this setting to check. All right, so if you want to refresh data when opening the Excel file, we need to reference the pivot table pivot cache first, followed by that refresh on open. And we can set the uh, setting to true or false. And let's see. I'm going to skip the rest of settings since I've never used these two settings before. And here, let's continue. The last tab is the alternative text uh, tab. This feature is pretty useful when you are working on a project that you want to uh, provide additional information to describe your pivot table. All right, so let's say if you want to assign a different title to the pivot table report. I can assign the title by referencing the alternative, alternative text property. And here I can assign an alternative title to the pivot table. And I'm going to type sales summary two. For the description, it's going to be under the summary property. So I'm going to type sales summary description. And that's it. Right, so if I recreate the pivot table, now going back, oops, here, let me turn off the classic pivot table setting. And let me recreate the pivot table. Oh, this should be actually wrong setting. Should be this one. Now if I go back to my pivot table options, let me go to the alternative text tab. Here I have sales summary two and sales summary description. Under the printing tab, 
my settings should be unchecked, check and check. Now let's go to the data tab. Here, let me go back to my uh, VBA window. All right, so if I do a comparison against my uh, VBA script, I'm setting all the options to true. So if I look at my pivot table data section, and all the settings are checked. So this is everything I'm going to show you in this video. And hopefully you guys found this video useful. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video.